The 981 Boxster and Cayman followed on from the 987 generation and were produced from 2012 to 2016. After this, a thorough refresh begins the fourth generation. In this buyer's guide, we'll focus in on the last generation of the naturally aspirated Boxster and Cayman models. Launched at the Geneva Auto Show in March 2012, Deliveries to customers of Boxster models began in late summer that year, while Cayman buyers had to wait a little longer, the first arriving in the first half of 2013 as 2014 model year vehicles. Both models were constructed in Stuttgart, however overflow production was done at VW's group plant in Osnabrück, Germany that specialise in low series or limited production vehicles across the group. The 981 generation may have a short lifespan compared to other Porsche models, but it still has several variants from the base model Boxster with a 2.7 flat 6 to the track inspired Cayman GT4. We'll cover all variants in our guide and note anything that the model or variant specific throughout. While the early press critics of the 981 focused on the Cayman and its balanced chassis dynamics, the Boxster became one of the strongest contenders on the market for premium convertible sports cars. The Cayman continued to score headlines though, as along with its driving dynamics, the interior and larger overall frame than its predecessor left many wondering if the entry 911 still had a place in the lineup with the Cayman offering such a strong package. In the end, sales would speak for themselves and the entry 911 still attracted buyers, but the reception to the Cayman meant that the higher specification models would be inevitable as buyers wanted more from the mid-engine model and so although the GTS model satisfied some of the market, the GT4's entry into the lineup in the model lifespan with just over a year of production pulled enthusiast buyers into Porsche showrooms as the brand found the sweet spot of separating a 911 buyer from a high performance Cayman buyer. The Boxster didn't go without though getting a GTS model that answered the question of whether the brand could stretch the Boxster to compete with everything from a BMW Z4 and Mercedes SLK to a more nuanced opposition from Lotus and Alfa Romeo. A spider version kept those content that prefer their motoring fast but with a million miles of sky. The 30kg or 66 pound weight saving drew accolades in the motoring press but the GT4 swept up most buyers looking for a racier version of the 981 chassis and so finding a Spider on the used market will be more difficult as buyers, especially those that had stuck with the Boxster model from the beginning, are holding onto them in their collections and are reticent to part with them. If looking at the GT4 you'll have slightly more choice, but you don't need me to tell you that these are still relatively rare. And although our buyer's guide will help GT4 buyers, a complete inspection by a Porsche specialist is important as they are the most likely to have been driven hard on track and sometimes it's only with a bright light underneath the car can you see evidence of where driver talent ran out before the capability of the car. The majority of buyers will likely be looking at a regular or S variant of the Boxster and compared to its predecessor, the gains are notable. A curb weight of the entry 918 with manual gearbox is 1330kg or £2932 for the Boxster and 1310kg or £2888 for the Cayman. An increase of 30 kilograms or 66 pounds for both models. But in return is just over 2 inches or 5 centimeters in the wheelbase and 1.28 inches or 3.26 centimeters additional front track and a very small increase to rear track. For those unfamiliar with the term track width, a simple way of understanding it is the distance between the wheels on the same axle. The general aim for performance is to have them as close to the absolute corner of the frame as possible. A quick glance at a Formula 1 car is a good demonstration of this. Please note that due to the different regional laws and regulations, the exact weight figures of a car may differ in your home market, but the difference between a 987 generation and 981 generation should remain. The additional track width is one of the contributing factors to the 981's better handling and more stable agility at higher speed cornering. The turning circle is reduced by just shy of 4 inches or 10 centimeters, and although we will come on to the car's engines later in the guide, the power to rate ratio improves across the range. Efficiency is also boosted with Porsche claiming higher than 10% fuel saving compared to the previous generation. And a note that the 987 model wasn't exactly a thirsty slow car, in fact many still prefer it and the popularity of the guide to that model that you'll find in the comments below shows that although the 981 made improvements, the 987 still has a strong following. Important dates for used buyers to note are the launch models as already stated, with the Boxster going on to customers driveways around 9 months earlier than the Cayman. Both manual and PDK models are offered from launch, but if searching for Sport Chrono Package or Porsche Talk Vectoring, you are best to look later into 2013 and then into 2014 for greater choice. In 2014 the GTS model arrived and this split many new buyers at the time. The effect is that the base model Boxster and Cayman models are not so affected, but fewer high specification S models were chosen 
as the GCS attracted previous S owners to trade in for a GTS instead of another high specification S. In 2015 the GT4 arrived followed by the Spider that was first shown at the New York Auto Show in April 2015. The model began to reduce production as the 982 generation began in January 2016 when the naming convention was changed to 718 for the reworked model. As is common with low series production and sports vehicles, the official crash ratings are not applicable as the vehicles are not exposed to the testing so we cannot offer an NCAP or NHTSA safety rating, however generally speaking the poor safety cell system is well regarded. Moving on to the common faults and as ever we'll remind possible buyers that common issues can be as little as 0.5% of production models and so be aware of the information we provide but don't let it scare you from a purchase, just be vigilant when inspecting a vehicle. First up is specific to the 2013 built models and is two technical service bulletins from Porsche. The cavity wax seal applied at the factory may not have been correctly sealed and dealers would inspect and remedy any areas seen to not have been correctly covered as this could block drains causing other faults. As these vehicles will be over 10 years old now, it is worth inspecting the cavity seal wax anyway and if it appears to need treatment, many classic body shops can do this but it can also be a DIY job at home. The second issue found was the electronic parking brake control module. This can be easily inspected when viewing, make sure you apply the parking brake several times and make sure that it locks and releases without a problem. Both the manual gearbox and PDK are generally reliable in the 981 generation, however the PDK benefits to software updates that Porsche perform during dealer servicing. If a model you are looking at has a mixed history, it may be worth budgeting for a service at the main agent, even if not required, so they can run diagnostic and software updates that may have otherwise been missed. We did find some reports of PDK failures in researching for this video, but the actual number that could not be repaired or a direct fault of the PDK unit appeared very small. As ever though, we welcome owner feedback about this in the comments. Faulty sensors for the roof operating mechanism can cause faults or stop it operating altogether. This could be easy to check when looking at a used example, but make sure to operate the roof several times up and down as a faulty sensor may not stop the roof function every time. A software error in the instrument cluster was reported on 2013-2014 production models. Technical service bulletin WE02. Signs to look out for are service indications that don't make sense such as a service required in 10,000 mile warning when starting the car. The resolution is reprogramming the module for the instrument cluster. Air condenser failures have been reported when vehicles are between 5 to 8 years old, so if you see that it's had one replaced already, take it as a positive buying sign. Although later model years seem less affected, it should be easy to check this by running the AC and checking it is cold. Some owners were unaware until they attempted to have the system regassed, and the garage noticed a leak from the condenser. If you own or have owned a 981 and think we have missed a common fault, please add it in the comments to help potential buyers in the miles driven community, or share the video with others that may find it helpful. Next up are the recalls and in November 2014 a recall for model year 2014 and 2015 Boxster vehicles due to the locking mechanism for the front load compartment failing and causing the bonnet to open while driving. Not all markets are affected but it's worth checking to see if this recall was required and performed on any vehicle you are looking at. Another recall was made in 2019 for models sold between June 2015 and June 2016 as some airbag control units were found to have been fitted to vehicles outside of the factory tolerance. In this worst case, this could cause an airbag to deploy, the faulty units were identified and replaced. Now onto the engines, and a reminder that you can get a copy of the Mars Driven book with the stories of my time in the most trade and motoring media. Every sale funds the channel and hopefully provides an entertaining read. You'll find a link in the description and top comment below. We'll start with the entry level 2.7 litre flat 6 engine offered from launch in both models, producing 261 brake horsepower in Boxster models and 271 brake horsepower in Caymans. These take a strong share of the early year sales for both models, but demand reduced in later years, so the most choice will likely be found in 2012, 2013 and 2014. Official fuel economy is quoted at 35.1 miles per gallon or 8.05 litres per 100 kilometres. Manual gearboxes remain desirable and the optional sports exhaust is something to look out for and generally worth paying a little extra for, even if you shouldn't expect any appreciable power gain. Cam timing solenoid valves should be replaced in pairs and are one of the more common failure points as these vehicles age and sell with higher and higher mileage. Aside from that the engine is considered reliable, although examples with stretch servicing can become problematic. The engine really does need oil servicing done on time and can start to cause wear issues if these timings are stretched, so checking service records is crucial. 
the 3.4 is shared between the S and GTS models, the Boxster S gets 311 brake horsepower and the Cayman gets 321 brake horsepower, and the same 10 horsepower difference exists in the GTS, the Boxster getting 325 brake horsepower and the Cayman offering 335 brake horsepower. Official fuel economy of 34.4 miles per gallon or 8.21 litres per 100 kilometres varies a little across the power output. If purchasing this engine with a Sport Chrono package then dynamic engine mounts can fail and are an expensive fix. However, the number of failures versus the number that reach a point where wear is consummate with age and mileage means that these are generally more of a maintenance concern than a failure. Just be prepared for a large bill when they do need replacing. If you can find one that has already had them changed, take it as a positive buying sign. Actuators in the exhaust can stick open or shut. Specialists may attempt to remove and free up frozen actuators with grease before replacing them, but if they are beyond repair, replacement will be the only option. Both the GT4 and Boxster Spider are fitted with a 3.8 litre and this time the Boxster gets the same power as the Cayman, both produce 370 brake horsepower with an official average of 28.5 miles per gallon or 9.91 litres per 100 kilometres. Although a small number of reliability issues were reported early on including gearbox issues and overheating warnings, Porsche were quick to respond to any owner issues and since then we were able to only find a few complaints that were not maintenance related. This is likely due to the lower number of vehicles sold than the rest of the range along with owners generally adding less miles. For this reason it is worth assessing the previous owner's usage of a vehicle and assessing bodywork to look for signs of any accidents. One area worth assessing is the underside edges. Run your hand along the corners of the front bumper and along the lower sills. If a car has been used on track, witness marks from the rumble strips or any off-track excursions will likely be left here, out of sight, unless a vehicle is on a ramp. For Alpix, most buyers will likely be content with the base level Boxster. It offers so much and although there are higher performance models, it's still a great sports car that is sometimes overlooked compared to the S model. In this generation, you also get the last naturally aspirated basic model and as time goes on, this may just be a bit sweeter to own. For a higher budget pick, the Cayman or Boxster in GTS specification will give almost everything a performance buyer will want without the premium of stepping up to the GT4 or Spyder. For high budget buyers that only want the best, the motor impressed were conclusive. The GT4 was an outstanding car, and the first time the Cayman really was let off the leash to challenge the 911 range. But many feel that the later GT4 in the 718 generation is the better car. Certainly it's 4 litre engine, and lessons learned from this earlier GT4 help, so keep that in mind. Next up why not check out the Japanese contender, the Nissan 370Z. As ever, all the best with your car search.